creating with Carol. She does know what she's gonna do, but she's gonna share it all with you. Creating with Carol. So I have embarked on a creative voyage, a creative voyage across unknown creative seas. That's right. I was feeling so inspired to make a beautiful, fantastical fantasy mermaid crown. A lot of you may know I happen to love mermaids. My heart lies with the ocean. So I was inspired by looking online and seeing these beautiful crowns and creations that other people have made. They were just fabulous and I thought to myself, I want to try to make one of those. Now, I have no prior experience in trying to make any of these types of items and I'm honestly not much of a crafter. I'm a 2D artist and illustrator for my day job. So this is totally uncharted territory for me. I invite you to sail the creative seas with me into the unknown as I make this beautiful creation. However, before I do, please swim on over to the like button and make a splash and then head over to the notification bell and ring it. That way the sharks will know it's dinner time. All right, everybody, hold on to your fins. Let's dive in. Every good idea starts with a sketch. So I headed over to Amazon and purchased supplies for my crown. All in all, I probably spent more, I think, in supplies or about the same amount as it would be to purchase an already made crown. But hey, there's absolutely no adventure or fun in purchasing an already created item. So I ended up purchasing more supplies than I really needed, but that was a good thing because I had a couple of do-overs on this craft project. Really, the other thing is, is that if you buy these supplies like on Amazon or at Michael's or someplace, you're gonna get a lot more supplies than you would need for just one project. So you'd be able to make more than one crown, theoretically. The things that I purchased were a whole bag of seashells, and they were all mixed, um, fake pearls in random sizes, some quartz crystals that have been um, dipped in, I don't know, an anodizing solution or something to make them look rainbow and they look really cool. I also purchased a metal headband to serve as the base for my crown, and I also purchased a few construction items such as hot glue, E6000 glue, and also some crystals to add to the glamorous glittery look of the crown when I'm finished. I got the ones for nail art and they worked perfectly. Supplies I had on hand were things like scissors, beads, bits and bobs, and also some stretchy cord that I had left over from other craft projects. I started off with plastic zip ties, not shown here but also um, then I purchased metal zip ties later for version two. Needless to say, if you're gonna make your own mermaid crown, feel free to use whatever supplies that you think are awesome. And I'm sure you can let your imagination run wild. So as I mentioned, I ended up doing a couple of different versions of this craft project. Basically, I didn't know what I was doing um, and I was just winging it. I'm not the best crafter in the world, but I can figure it out. And really, that's what art's all about anyway, I believe, is persistence and figuring it out as you go along. Each art project is its own unique puzzle and project to be solved. And the more of them that you do, the better at it you get. So I started off with the black plastic zip ties, um, the regular ones that you can get, but I had also purchased metal zip ties. I of course tried to like hot glue them on um, with hot glue, which wasn't a very good idea. And then I spray painted them gold. And of course the paint just scratched off immediately so then I decided to try the metal zip ties, which also wasn't a very good idea, and you'll see why in a moment. I 
after I slept on it, I decided that I might try to actually use the metal zip ties and see how it goes um, by doing the same method of just hot gluing them to the frame here. Uh -oh. Ugh, that's what happens when you don't let your hot glue dry long enough. <laughs> I have a feeling this stuff's just gonna pop right off. No, really, you don't say. I should have listened to my inner feeling. And it got really frustrating. But I'm very stubborn and I persisted. The issue was my hot glue attachment method because a lot of these crowns are made with zip ties. But because I was hot gluing them on directly to the metal piece, of course, duh, they just kept popping right off. So days later, after much trial and error, I started over. Okay, plan B, since I realized that this won't work quite right with the um, stretchiness of this, I'm gonna have to reattach these again, so. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that I was so excited by having a new idea about how to attach these zip ties that I attached them all wrong again and ended up having to take them all back off again. Fun times. Backwards moment. And back snip some more off. Oh hey, what's that pink thing at the end of the crown, do you ask? Well, my crown base broke earlier, and so I had to use some E6000 to glue it back together and use a hair tie as a friendly clamp. Sometimes you just gotta get creative. And finally, I figured out the correct way to attach these metal zip ties. Now I think I figured out a method to my madness with this. I don't know why I didn't just think to start this way to begin with. I decided that all the um, zip ties need to be secured to the lower part of the band. Then they can be weaved up through the middle part of the stone right here. so that when this comes apart, it moves with it. The next challenge will come when I go to stick the rainbow ones on next. And those will also likely have to be wired into place. ahead and kind of put them approximately where I think I want them. After I had the rainbow colored zip ties where I wanted them, I then proceeded to create and make some 3D printed ends for these zip ties. I hand sculpted them in a 3D VR program called Medium. It's really fun, and if you haven't checked it out, you should check it out. I'll put the link below. I then proceeded to spray paint these fancy gold ends gold with 24 karat gold Krylon spray paint. After that, it was time for dry brushing and then some glitter stone embellishments to make the crown look extra pretty once it was finished. These ends served two purposes. One was a bit of safety so that you wouldn't get poked by one of the metal zip tie ends. Not that they're sharp or anything, but just a safety measure. And two, they look extra pretty and add a bit of ornate detail to the ends of the crown.
Okay, so now I'm measuring uh, the length that I want to cut these off because I'm going to put these guys on the end. Thinking maybe like five inches. These are going to fit on the end like that. They only go, they don't go in very far, so. Try to aim for like five and a half inches on the silver one. I don't want these to be too floppy. And I'm not going to get too picky. those five and a half and these I cut them like here I don't know what that is should probably take a measurement just so I can try to be somewhat consistent seven and three quarters there So the next thing I did was 3D print some corals. Um, I got these from the Smithsonian's website. They actually have a whole collection of really cool natural models that you can download and then 3D print on your printer. So you might want to check that out for other types of craft projects. I then took these 3D printed corals and I spray painted them with the same 24 karat gold spray paint. These are now ready to be used as embellishments on my crown. So I had to figure out exactly how I wanted to put the seashells on them and embellish them further. So I decided to decorate them with these really pretty spotted seashells that I had and some fake pearls and also some really pretty sparkly gems. Here I just went to town and attached them with lots and lots of hot glue.
Once they were complete, then I just went ahead and attached them to the crown in spots that I thought they fit the best. The worst part was those darn little sticky strings that the hot glue leaves behind. Man, I hate those things. Then I had to figure out where all the little seashells and fiddly boppy boops would go, so I went ahead and did that. Now it was time to cover up all the glue and the wire with ribbon, at least to help hide things and make things look a little bit prettier. So basically here, I'm just using sheer ribbon. You could use any kind of ribbon. Um, and I'm just wrapping it very loosely around the crown and putting a little bit of hot glue down as I go. kept adding shells, pearls, stones, crystals um, until everything was pretty filled up and I couldn't really fit any more in. And I just added them aesthetically where I felt they looked the best.
So I decided my crown needed more corals, so I made these beautiful corals with um, the gold spray paint, 3D printed models, and fake pearls, and fake crystal gems. And then I headed off to string some pearls. Let me figure out my shell situation. I was thinking about use maybe using these snail shells to like cover the base there. We'll just go for that. I, don't, I can't couldn't decide if I liked the snail shells better or the clam shells. The clam shells though are a bit more redundant, you know. Ultimately, yeah, I went for the snail shells, and I think they turned out great. Could have done this while they were flat, but then I don't think I would have been able to get them kind of wedged between the wire. Then once it's kind of stuck on there, I can go in from the back and use more of my friendly hot glue to glue everything on. Now this one, I kind of like them twisted kind of more straight up. What do you think? I think straight up looks good. I like the green snail shells. I think that was a great choice. Just covering up the end there. That one broke in the 3D printing removal. I swear, if anybody knows how to get rid of these little wispies, please, by all means. Let me know an easier way to get rid of the wispies. It's like really important that this upper band can expand some because when you go to put these things on your head, it's got to be able to move around. Otherwise, it'll get like wonky to be able to have some movement. Okie dokie. Now, for the big thing, I'm going to have to figure out well, how do I want to attach this uh, glamorous pearl strand and where exactly is it going to go? And they're all wobbly woo. I kind of like it just draping down like that, you know? I just have it uh, scotch taped on here. I was thinking maybe I could just tie them on and then put a little like tiny bit of glue or something. Actually, you know what I could do? I think there's just enough of a hole right there that I can shove both pieces through. So I think I'm gonna tie it there actually. I may end up having to do the same with the lower ones. This one through here. This one. It worked. This is a uh, tacked on there magically. That I could do that all over the place. I think I found a method, magical method accomplished, but I need to tie my knots better. This one should be a little bit easier than attaching it to the thing at the top because 
we could have attached it to the thing at the top. I think it's better down here. I'm not gonna second guess myself. I'm just gonna go for it. I just feel like I need some more arms. My attachment method came undone. Undone. I think it came undone because maybe I snipped it funny. I'm learning my lesson to do longer <laughs> or easier. probably need one on the back here. Hold on. The pearls down at the bottom here. Not perfectly symmetrical. I don't honestly really care if it's symmetrical. Ah, okay, lesson to self. Don't pull this stuff too hard. Get over here, you. Just don't tighten your knots too tight when you're using this stuff. And that'll be fine. bits and tying them on is the way to go. If I want to make sure that my pieces hang, stay hanging more this more or less the same all the time. It kind of be got to be tacked in in place in some certain key spots. Don't you at least got the square knot? I think it's pretty stable. Could be. Wrong. So it was about at this point that I decided to get all fancy and get out my hot glue gun. And I thought it might be a good idea to try and put a little dab of hot glue on the knots of the stretchy cord. Bad, bad idea, and here's why. Uh, okay, hot glue is not the thing to use on uh, this stuff. Just totally melted my strand. Not good. Not good at all. Thought maybe I could hot glue it, but I guess hot glue plus stretchy string equals equal melting. So. Do not use hot glue on plastic stretchy cord if that's what you're using to string your pearls. Consider that. Not the smartest pee in the box. I just don't trust it to stay on its own. So I may try some E6000 glue. See if it dissolves the plastic. Oh, come on. Come on, you guys. Hopefully it won't look too terrible. Hopefully. Tie the sky back on. And really hope for the best that I can put like some E6000 or some other kind of glue on there to kind of secure it 
that won't eat it away. I'll have to do like a test on some scrap. Because I am concerned that if I just leave it tied, the knots aren't going to be tight enough and then if it gets tweaked on or something, it'll just come up. It almost makes me wish and think that I should have used a thread, like a thick um, embroidery thread or something. I don't think anybody will notice too much after I cut the things off. So I'm going to do some little tests, see if I can add some glue to the knots. And then we'll put on the final finishing touches on this thing. And also I think I'm going to glue on a few more pearls. Um, and then I haven't quite decided what to do with this little bit here. I may look and see if I have some sort of decorative bead or gem that I could attach to the end to make it look really pretty. Um, otherwise I, I could just attach it here maybe. I kind of like how that looks. So I'll do this and um, then be right back. You just gotta be very careful because that glue is hot. It's very hot. Oh, Carol, of course it's hot. It's hot glue. to make it a little more glittery. I think the pink on the silver is too gaudy so what I think I'm going to do is use these white ones on the silver just to give it a little more sparkle. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how they stick to metal. I'm really not sure how this is going to go. I could just if they fall off I can glue them on with the E6000 I guess. So maybe like one. Right there. I don't know if they're gonna stick very good to the metal at all. It seems like they're maybe, I don't know, maybe they're made from more like fabric and stuff. Um, the E6000 tube is kind of old and it decided that uh, it was going to um, not pour out anymore. Originally I thought these were sticky back, but I think they're just like plain rhinestones. I don't know. I think about the pink. Do I want pink? Is it too gaudy? We can try one and see. It's kind of interesting. Uh, and it certainly goes with the colors that I have. Might make it shine a little bit more. Kind of reminds me of um, little water droplets or something. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is flip this guy over and snip off all my uh, threads. And I did a little test last night, and what I ended up doing was putting a little bit of E6000 on the 
not. And I feel like that helped to like secure the knot so it's not gonna pull out over time. Because the only thing with this stretchy stuff is that when I have used it before, I've noticed that my threads and things tend to pull out sometimes. So it'll be particularly important on the other side here where I joined these together uh, after I broke my string the other night, I think. I think that's most of my threads. I'm just going to leave like this wire wrapped look. Seemed like the test I did yesterday was okay and that the stuff didn't make the plastic brittle, so this is so it's so hot out right now. My glue is just drying practically instantly. And if you wanted to get more elaborate, obviously you could put more other stones or other things to the back part of the crown. But for my purposes, I'm just going to leave it blank on the back. And fabulous in the front. The other thing I have left to do on this is I need to find something for these ends here. So I will be looking into that. So here I'm putting the uh, tool on, the base tool, and um, I have to remember not to be too globby with the hot glue, just to put a little bit on, um, otherwise I get those glue strings. And um, I'm just leaving this kind of loose right now. I'm going to go in with the gold netting here in a minute after. Hopefully this will just camouflage some of the ugly back bits. Apply this loosely up here. Let's see what we got. I just had this pretty gold stuff lying around. I tend to just like hoard fabric materials. Whenever I used to go into like Joann's or whatever, I would always uh, scavenge around the uh, remnants bin and look for little scraps of stuff. So I have a lot of things that are kind of just um, stored, you know for later use. I don't know if you can see this, but kind of just wrapping it around here casually. And then I think I'll cut some, like I said, some strips or something. A little tricky, it wants to get hung up on everything pretty on the front. I think it looks nice. I'll just sort of move it over. Okay, now I think I'm going to tie on a few of these strips. I don't really know that I want them to be permanent at this point because I'm not sure how well I'm going to like it when I tie it on. So I'm probably just going to take some strips of, of this material here. I'm going to kind of twist it and tie it on in a knot and my idea is just to have some kind of shredded pieces of net, fishing net, that will be like interspersed in the hair when I wear it. So we'll see how this works. I'm hoping maybe I can just give it a little twist 
and then kind of tie it on the back like so and just kind of tuck it in there so I roughly measured my hair from my top of my head to my bottom of my strands and I came up with 19 or 20 inches in the front I'm gonna cut it at about that maybe a little bit longer just so I have some excess to cut and also I really want like I think I want it to be kind of tattered too so and then when I try it on I'm going to uh, try to make sure that it's where I want it to be as far as length and stuff and then I can even take this and maybe I might be able to just kind of rip it, kind of make it a little more tapered at the end so that I get like, maybe get like a couple of more than one strand kind of coming down and then it's not so even. I want it to look like a fantasy mermaid just like found some random treasures at the bottom of the sea and or stole some pirate booty and she drug the sailors down again I, I don't really care too much if they're very symmetrical and the other nice thing about tying these on is that if I decide I really don't like how it looks I can just take them off easy they're not hot glued onto anything Tucking and tying. It would also be cute to like kind of knot these. Rip or cut works, but cutting's a little bit more reliable. Huzzah! It's finally finished! And now I'm going to show you guys some photos and a little video of me wearing this beautiful crown. for watching and I hope wherever life takes you, you will always stay creative. If you haven't checked out my singing channel, please head on over to the link in the description below. I actually recorded a cover song video in which I use this accessory.